week on Top Billing. We're swimming in the company of elephants and dining at a pop-up bistro in the bush at the Huangge National Park. Oscar-winning actress Lupita Nyong'o tells the true life story of a young Ugandan chess prodigy in the Disney film Queen of Katwe. Bonang, Miss South Africa and a bevy of beauties reign supreme at the SA Lingerie Fashion Show. Ndebele jewellery sparks lighting ideas and Swahili tradition redefines modern design. And Mawini Matikizela Mandela celebrates 18 landmark years. Lona Maseko presents tonight's show from the ancestral Matobo Hills home of a conservationist as in love with vintage cars and African design as he is with the call of the wild. Good evening and a very warm welcome to Top Billing. When in the heart of Africa, what do you do? You go on safari, of course, and you couldn't possibly be in a more perfect part of our continent to do it. Join me on an unforgettable journey with elephants. Named after a local Nhanswa chief, Honge National Park is the largest in Zimbabwe. And October is when this great plateau is at its driest. With animals gathering at waterholes, it's also the best time of year for game viewing. Amongst the 400 bird species and 100 types of mammal, the elephants are the stars of the show. As our private guide, Louis Mangaba, told us, they are the reason why this is known as the land of the giants. Louis, it's actually quite amazing that we're standing amongst a herd of elephants. This is actually what actually makes Wanga special. So Wange measures about 1.4 million hectares. So it's one of the greatest densities of uh, elephant in the whole world. So what you're looking at right now, we actually got different families here with different matrix. So dry season makes uh, the highest concentration of uh, animals in one place. They somehow seem quite unbothered by our presence. So in order for them to know that we're here, we always take the, the bullet and actually knocks uh, against uh, the magazine. So this metallic sound actually helps them to be aware of our presence here. So we actually got young bulls like these ones, uh, possibly 20 years or so. So they always want to show they're actually big uh, by extending toe and challenging every species. I believe you use quite a unique method to provide water for the elephants in quite a dry area. You're right, especially this area is actually very dry. So we have a very healthy aquifer here. So the drainage uh, lines that we're actually standing, they're actually uh, part of uh, one of uh, the ancient uh, lake in Botswana, which is called Mahadi Hadi. So we have a very healthy uh, um, water table underground. What is absolutely fascinating is that we're literally about 50 meters away from the elephants, and yet I don't think you'll get an experience like this anywhere in the world. Africa is definitely where you're supposed to be, and Zimbabwe is that country. We were guests at Somalisa Acacia, which is situated on an acacia island along these floodplains. This year-round tented camp on a private concession sleeps a total of 14 and offers a wildlife experience in a class of its own. Yvonne, you really have such a beautiful property here. Well, we offer an authentic um, African bush experience here. So, you know, you've got the um, luxury of the tents, but also just that inner piece of fresh air, animal sounds, and just the beauty of the African bush that we have to offer. The wonderful aspect about guests staying here is that they contribute to sustainable tourism. Absolutely. Um, guess what? We actually won the Green Tourism Award. We got the Gold Star, which is the only one in Zimbabwe. You might have seen the big solar panels when you're driving in. So this whole camp is actually operated by solar. Very soon, we're looking at recycling all the grey water so we can actually give it back to the pan. And also all the products, the cleaning products and the animities in your room, they're all eco-friendly as well. So we make sure that we're keeping in line with that. These elegantly furnished sail tents, each ensuite and with a glass wood burner fireplace, offer a charm, a privacy and style from another era. I absolutely love the brass and copper finishes. Yes, this is inspired by a classic safari with modern twist. This lovely bed that we have here is made by a company in Blue Wave. 
So you try to keep everything internal? Absolutely, and even the brick wall, we gave a lot of business to the local um, brick makers. This is handmade in Deta, which is just outside of the Wanga National Park. So it's been really good working with the community as well. A definite showpiece for me is that amazing bath. Isn't it just gorgeous? Can you see that um, nice copper look that it has? It's very subtle but very classic and luxurious as well. Each tent has an indoor and outdoor shower. There are views in every direction. And when it's mealtime, head chef Adam Nyoni offers quite an experience. Okay, this is an interactive menu. Everything, it's uh, homemade. So this is fun for the whole family and that wonderful homemade pizza oven that we have. Three minutes and your pizza's good to go. I have a brilliant idea. One thing you don't know about me is that I'm a huge foodie. So I think Chef Adam should judge who makes the best pizza between you and I. You're on. Good luck. It's some kind of place to get a pizza craving. But since you're unlikely to get any delivery service bringing you a margarita or pepperoni out here, this is a stroke of genius. It wouldn't be the last one on our visit. Yvonne and Lorna were in this to win it and weren't above currying favour with the judge. <laughs> Baking pizzas is a fine distraction for younger guests who understandably can't go on walking safaris. Deciding a winner between kids is far easier for Chef Agnoni than finding himself caught between two proud lady chefs. Now I have to announce my winner, uh, Luna, you are the winner because of my homemade onion marmalade and homemade chili. I love that. Thank you very much, Chef. Oh, congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. Should we dig in? Shall we? Absolutely. It was after lunch that Lorna discovered the elephant pool and just how close it gets you to these great creatures. No one said it was going to be this spectacular. I mean, that is truly phenomenal. We just didn't want to tell you everything. This is one of those things you have to discover and just experience by yourself. When this camp first started, this was actually a human pool. Wow. But of course, elephants, you know, and other animals just being them, they took over. They're like, why are you having fun in the fresh water? We want to have it. So obviously we're like, you know what? Go for it. We put the little trough there so the babies can also have a drink. So now it just belongs to them. That's their water. I love how this lodge constantly puts the animals first before the humans. Of course, we are visitors here, remember that. So we have to look after the animals and then we come after that. The dry months are the best time to visit Somalisa. During the green season from December to March, animals are harder to spot, but the birding is spectacular. For us, it was an elephant extravaganza. It's quite fascinating to watch. As one family comes in, the other moves out, and there's quite a lot of order in the wild, which one wouldn't automatically assume. I think the most fascinating thing for me is that it's moments like this that make you appreciate life and this blessing called the wild. The subtropical thorn and sand flats were once home to the nomadic sand bushmen. Their preservation has everything to do with unforgettable tourism experiences like this one. Next, we follow Denzel Safula in the footsteps of Hwange's first warden, Ted Davison, who began protection against poaching and started tourism here. This pop-up bush restaurant that leaves nothing but your footprints is one he would approve of. Denzel, I think trying to take the city life out of me is definitely working. This is absolutely amazing. Yes, I mean, a lot of people are, are used to the whole setup in the lodges and, uh, you know, the three courses and etc. But uh, the bush setup itself, actually, the whole main thing is to bring you closer to the nature. I mean, look around you. Uh, another possible chance of an elephant just moving around here are very high. So that is the whole idea. I think your strategy is working. This is really great. Should we dig in? Please, enjoy your meal. A burger with the guys out here in their domain was already a treat. What Lorna didn't expect was live entertainment. Lorna, I got one more surprise for you. Okay, I'm excited. You're gonna love this, definitely. First up, we got a menswear fashion show on the latest trends in Hungay style, followed by a live unplugged concert from Mr. Louis Mangaba. Here I was thinking we were coming out to the wild, but the wild came out to us. How beautiful was that? I'm sure there were about 30 elephants just walking around us as we're having this delicious lunch. Magical. Thank you, guys. This style of safari was begun by entrepreneur Bex Nglovu. 
After a career as a high-end safari guide, he established his first camp, and today he has nine of them in three countries. Bex, this place has opened my eyes to a part of Zimbabwe that I don't think people are really familiar with. I think that's the magic and the beauty of it, is uh, being out in a place that is, I would say, uh, unexplored to a large extent. So you really feel like, you know, there is remote and then there's Somalisa. What has been amazing for me is the heart of the people that work at Somalisa. They've really made it feel like home. I think for me it's always been, you know, everybody has got wildlife, everybody has got the big five and everybody has got, you know, fancy places with everything that opens and closes and it's, for us it's never been about that. That's why our slogan is an authentic African experience and really the magic is created by the superstars who are the guides, the magicians, the artists who actually create all of this magic. I've visited many lodges and done many safaris in my life, but this has truly been one of the most magnificent experiences I've ever had. Zimbabwe has ignited my love for wildlife and Somalesa is now a place I can also call home. Cheers. From Vic Falls, it's 40 minutes by air, then a 30 minute game drive. Our thanks to Airlink, who flew us to and from Bulawayo, on time and in the spacious Avro RJ85. With over 4,000 flights a month to 36 destinations in nine African countries of the SADC sub-region, Airlink fly to more local destinations than any other airline. Up next, Debele Jewelry sets off a light bulb in Candice Lawrence's head and fellow designer Wangangwane merges modern with Swahili. profile fashion creatives who create four seasonal visions a year. The flip side is what designers Wangangwane and Candice Lawrence do. Their stunning tables must both catch the eye and retain that appeal, not for a season, but for generations. Candice Lawrence works from home, conceiving and creating her lighting and homeware range. Her small but thriving startup is informed by everyday life, Pinterest and Instagram but her creations are all her own and inspired by indigenous African culture. Working from home, isn't it wonderfully convenient? Yes, it's totally convenient. Um, I get to roll out of bed and just start creating and um, it's never a bad thing to have my parents around just to give that extra helping hand when I need it. So definitely working from home has been a blessing. What motivated you to get into design? Well, to be honest, um, my mom and I, we used to watch Top Billing when I was really young, when I was like 10, 12, 13. And it's actually through Top Billing that I wanted to specialize in design. I thought I'd be an interior designer or an interior decorator. And it's from there that I actually specialized in studying design at CPUT. Candice, I have to say, you've really made a statement with your beautiful cylindrical lights. What was the inspiration? The light behind me was inspired by the Ndebele culture and just other African cultures where I look very closely at beadwork and just how these layers and layers of beadwork would adorn a woman or a man. And I thought, how could I interpret this into a light fitting? and I was experimenting with wooden rings and some wax thread and I just started weaving in between the rings to um, create this sort of necklace structure and it turned out to be a pretty good design and there's just something unique and beautiful about it. The light just seems to penetrate the threads in between and just create a beautiful um, illumination in a space. Candice explores different production techniques and craft skills. She experiments with the physical and tactile properties of mixed mediums, such as ceramics, wax thread and plywood offcuts. So Jade, welcome to my workspace. What is it about timber that you enjoy working with? It's a very interesting material. There's always something new popping up. You never have the same finish as the next bowl or the next product. What are the trends that you're following at the moment? At the moment, I'm looking at being sustainable and eco-friendly in my products. With my woven lampshades, the wood is recovered from construction sites and the rings are able to flat pack. So that is something I've considered when shipping overseas. And the table was um, inspired by a trend 
a couple of years ago where I looked at people communicating on their cell phones and how in the past we used to communicate over a table and we used to speak to each other and if these tables could hold a story what would that table look like? Do you think you could teach me something very basic, some carpentry 101? I could teach you something basic. Um, we've got to put some safety gear on first. Getting off the laptop and engaging with material allows innovations that one can only come up with firsthand. Candice keeps it local while still achieving an international appeal. Hey, well done. <laughs> Well, I can't quite put a pencil on it yet, but I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> the team behind this leading design house support and promote South African artists, manufacturers and craftspeople. Amongst their contributing talents is Wonga Nguane, whose interest is in designing functional objects, especially with a history that's clearly African. We are surrounded by some of the greatest designs in the country in the showroom, and here is one of your pieces. I feel really blessed to have my pieces here because when I was a student, I really enjoyed um, Oka's work. And to have my piece here, it's, it's such an honor. I really feel like it's an achievement for me. What inspired this table? This table was inspired by the Tetris component, of which I call it Umoja, which is a Swahili name meaning unity. The whole set comes together to, to form one unit. You, of course, were a contestant in season two of the reality TV show, Winner Home. How did the competition shape you? Well, um, I really feel like being on the show has helped me with my career and it has established a platform for me to go forward. My style was very masculine, very industrial, and it let the feminine feel to it. And going forward, I've learned to apply that in my designs and in the way that I, I set up for exhibitions and stuff. Is that actually also yours? Yes, this is one of my pieces as well. I call it an Afro stool. It was inspired by the African headrest. They used to carry it, um, so it became a portable stool as well to sit on. Known as a chair specialist, Wonga's business also manufactures a range of furniture and accessories. Once again, it's a vehicle to bring our continent's own design tradition to the world. This is very interesting. What is it though? This is a sideboard that a user can convert into a TV stand. Jerry just helped us to put on the, the white legs. How about you help me put on the feature leg at the back here? Absolutely, I'm starting to get the hang of this DIY thing. Great stuff. There's a grill here. We have the screws somewhere there. Got them. All right, let's just place this right in on spot. There you go. All right. You need to exit force when you, when you drill. Here's the second one. If Wonga's keyhole chair needs neither screws nor glue to remain stable, this design requires so little final assembly, even novices can do it themselves. Here we go. Yeah, man. Wonga, this looks great. And the metal and the wood really does work together. Yeah. Um, basically, this is my sideboard. Uh, I'm inspired by the African headrest from Congo. Hence, I call this the, the Kufen Range. You actually lectured Candice, who I was with earlier. Have you ever imagined your pieces together? No, definitely. I mean, like, um, collaborating with other designers is always of importance because then it strengthens the product that we're coming up with and it actually complements each other, our styles. So it'll be great um, collaborating with her. I'll really look forward to that. I would love to see what kind of a, a product we come up with. And now that I have all this DIY knowledge, maybe I could collaborate with the two of you. Why not? Yeah. And by collaboration, I mean keep all the furniture. <laughs> nice strategy. Nice strategy. Stunning to the eye and working organically with other shapes and textures beneath the skin, Wonga's pieces also share Candace's focus on eco-friendly decor. In an age of computer-assisted design and 3D printing, both of them conceive their own ideas and are entirely hands-on in making them too. Taking problems and creating useful, beautiful solutions out of them is the genius of these artists of the everyday. It's quite a thought as you make something like that, how much what happens in people's lives will happen around the table you built. They are very special creations. Up next, Oscar-winning actress Lupita Nyong'o stars in Disney's Queen of Katwe, and Queen Bee sets the catwalk alight in her lingerie. Disney 
says the latest Hollywood studio to decide they rather like the uplifting stories coming out of Africa and Queen of Katwe is based on a true story of a young girl from the streets of Uganda whose life is transformed by the game of chess. Filmed between Uganda and South Africa, Queen of Katwe's Josie premiere was boosted by approval from US critics and growing commercial success. What's brought you out tonight? Um, I'm, I'm very excited to meet Lupita Nyong'o. I think she's an inspiration to a lot of African sisters and brothers. But I'm also here for a movie night to understand the, the real true story behind the lady and, and the chess player and the coach. I just want to experience the beautiful African story. You know, I was fortunate enough to be in the film in a little way, so I was able to be on set working with these guys. It was just amazing. What was the main message that you guys were trying to get across? That your circumstances don't have to define who you become. So you have this young girl who learns to play chess, a nice cerebral sport, and she transcends. And I think that's a narrative that we need to encourage, the possibility of what our continent can offer. And I think in this story, it's a story of triumph. And we see these kind of stories coming out of other countries. It's just really great for it to be coming out of Africa. We speak about Africa and immediately people imagine extreme poverty. It still exists, but there's also a lot of good happening in Africa. You can see our artists are flourishing overseas. So it would be nice to also bask in that and just see uh, where we are now as opposed to where we used to be. It's the story of nine-year-old Fiona Mutesi and her mother Harriet, played by Lupita Nyong'o, and how the family's daily struggle turns the day Fiona discovers chess. Young girl, come inside. Why are you letting her win? I'm not letting her. Fiona has the talent of a prodigy. Levita, thank you so much um, for joining us on Top Billing. It's a real pleasure to be talking to you. Thank you. As an Oscar-winning actress, what were the challenges of playing a role such as uh, Harriet, Fiona's mother, such a pivotal role in the film? I was attracted to this role because Mira Nair, the director, was asking me to play a mother of four. And um, Harriet is a young mom. She has her first child when she's 15. And so at the time that we meet her and she's so burdened by life, she's just barely 30. And uh, I was intrigued by her journey because she's a woman who, unlike me, is very suspicious of dreams and has been very disappointed in her life. And she has to go on this journey to learn that love is really acting out of radical hope, not out of fear and letting her daughter go and, and achieve things that she didn't know were possible. Inspired by an ESPN magazine article and the Queen of Katwe book by Tim Crothers, the true life story of Fiona is a tearjerker. The script had an immediate impact on you. It's uh, said that a few pages into it, you had already started um, feeling quite overcome by your emotions and you, and you broke down. What were you feeling at that point? It was just a, such an uplifting story, the fact that it was based on truth and was coming out of East Africa, which is my home, and that it's a positive view of an African story. And here was Disney offering me this role without me begging <laughs> to play it, you know? And so that was just unbelievable. And then Mira Nair was directing it, a, a woman whose work I deeply admire and I trust her implicitly. So all these reasons are the reasons why I cried. <laughs> An alumnus of Mira Nair's film lab and as an intern at her production company in New York, Lupita finally got to work with her mentor on camera. Lupita and David, firstly, why did you decide to cast them? And especially that young woman who used to be your intern making you lots of cups of tea and uh, now is uh, one of your lead actresses in, in your film, Queen of Katwe. Well, it's, you know, it's wonderful to be directing Lupita because Lupita is like directing a daughter, you know. I have seen her grow up and it's beautiful to see her meteoric rise as a bona fide Hollywood movie star because that also allows movies like Queen of Katwe to exist. So in the beginning, knowing Lupita and knowing Harriet and seeing that core of mother courage in Harriet, I called it the Lupita draft. We wrote the draft of the screenplay with her in mind. As an independent filmmaker, uh, you've been known as that um, with Mirabai Films, and now you collaborated with Disney. What was that shift like? 
Well, you know, the irony is that I live in Uganda now 27 years and surrounding myself with local stories, both in my film school and otherwise. And it was Disney, it was Hollywood who came to me, you know, in my garden in Kampala with the story of Fiona Mutesi uh, from a little journal in a sports newspaper. And uh, Disney allowed me to make this without sugar coating, without varnish, without any sanitizing or Disneyfication. And that's what's remarkable. But at its heart, the values are what Disney upholds, which is that you really can dream and achieve your potential. That, in a sense, a Cinderella, but a Cinderella of the streets, you know, a Cinderella of the mud that is a lotus. You just have to see it. Sometimes the place you are used to is not the place you belong. You belong where you believe you belong. Where is that for you? What was the most fulfilling and enjoyable thing about actually being part of the film? First of all, it's my relationship with the children I worked with. You know, it, real friendship blossomed working on this film. And Madina Narwanga, who plays Fiona, she has a very similar story. I mean, what Chess did for Fiona, this film is doing for Madina. And to watch a non-actor learn so much on the job and really carry this film is remarkable. And uh, it was definitely extremely inspiring. Lastly, what do you want people to walk away from when they watch this film? Well, I'd like them to walk away with the idea that a small one can become the big one. The idea that you should find something you're passionate about and do it with all your heart because chess could have been a very frivolous thing that Fiona was getting involved with, but it's the thing that pulled her family out of poverty. It's the thing that now has provided me with a job things that Fiona herself could not have known when her mind and her heart awoke to chess. So I think living a life full of passion is actually very useful to the world. Queen of Katwe is winning hearts. It may well win an Oscar, and it opens in cinemas across South Africa on October 14th. From one African queen to our very own queen bee, Bolang Mateba is the muse for the luxurious new distractions lingerie collection. And if anything can make a woman feel she has the world at her feet, it's one of these gorgeous numbers. From the fun and vibrant to the elegantly classy, variety was the spice of life at this year's Marie Claire and Cosmopolitan SA Lingerie Fashion Show. Bolang is well known for her Woolworths distraction print campaigns and there was an electric anticipation around her headlining runway appearance. Bunang, you look absolutely exquisite as always. Could you tell us about your collaboration with Woolworths, Kat Johan Kutsia and Distractions? Well, um, I've been uh, the face of Distraction at Woolworths, uh, the lingerie collection, for about three years going on four and uh, you know it's been a wonderful relationship so we thought it would be lovely to showcase my new collection and also because Khat Johan Kutsia is my, you know, favorite design in the whole wide world. I thought, typical Bonang, bring some couture wherever she goes. So I thought, let's pile it all up together. Bonang for distraction, Woolworths and Khaja Han and this is what we came up with. The all-star lineup included supermodel sister act Roxanne and Simone van Royen and dynamite duo Rosette Nwana and Adiola Ario. Rosette, Adiola, you two look super hot. Who are you wearing? We're wearing JT1, um, the, like, the colors are amazing, first of all, and as you can see, hers has lace, and this one is so summery and bright, and that's what I like about it. And they're super comfortable as well. Yes. I'm very sassy and very playful, playful colors. Ladies, I'm gonna start a sentence, and then you can complete it with whatever comes to mind first. I can't wait for summer because? Um, because I just had two babies, and I'm ready to hit the beach. <laughs> She literally just said what I wanted to say, apart from the two babies, though. <laughs> I can see why they call this collection Distraction. You look sensational. Yes, it's absolutely stunning. Um, I'm actually quite flattered that I get to wear it, which is fantastic. And uh, I feel quite sexy in it, I must say. It's my favorite outfit, no doubt. <laughs> what do you think makes Woolworths fashion unique? Um, they're always in trend, and I always find them quite accessible and you know within reach for most people. Ntando, what do you think about the Woolworths lingerie collection? I think Woolworths has done a pretty good job. It's young, it's sexy and it's a lot of fun. So I'm excited about the show and I'm excited for the viewers to see what uh, Woolworths has in store. If the celebrity guests had anything else booked for this day, they'd cancelled. Nobody was about to miss Queen Bee striding out in the very definition of distraction. 
it was sophisticated and playful. Well, the atmosphere is absolutely lively. It's popping. I'm so excited for some sexy lingerie. And a few of my friends are actually walking the runway, so I'm very excited for tonight. So I'm here to see uh, the ladies modeling the amazing stuff that's on show. And hopefully, for a single guy like myself, maybe pick up a, a wife or something. I don't know. The essential things about lingerie is it's all about the fabrication and how it actually cuts and drapes around the female figure. There was fevered discussion amongst the ladies in the front row as to which was their favorite combination. Since the men were speechless, Miss S.A. gave us her thoughts. What is your favorite piece you're wearing tonight? My favorite piece has to be the JT one. I think all of them are my favorites because they all come very differently and I just can't wait to wear all of them. Bonang's Hent Johan Kutzir custom design was a license to thrill and the models made the most of a night in which they could flaunt such fabulous designs. It could have gone on till midnight as far as Jimmy Nevis was concerned. I mean, it was so cool. Honestly, such a great show. And it was uh, quite, there was quite a couple of uh, things on display, which was great. Uh, but it was cool to actually come and see a whole lot of uh, collections out here tonight. I think tonight was really phenomenal. And, uh, and also just like appealing to a mass crowd that follow and love lingerie. And Bonang was phenomenal. Opening and closing the show was just the only thing we needed tonight. It really was amazing. There's a, a lot of adrenaline was exciting. The crowd was fantastic. I felt amazing. The models were exquisite. The production was fantastic. Even behind the scenes, everybody took care of us. The hair, the makeup. So I'm good. I'm feeling wonderful. The latest from Distractions and JT1 is available at Woolworths now. As a set of superheroes, with great power comes great responsibility. And ladies, if you're going to wear numbers like those, please exercise your power responsibly. Next, the best of the good life for entrepreneur Bexum Globu is a home that's off the grid and out of cell range. Situated in Zimbabwe's Matobo Hills with a vintage Model T Ford to get you there. Every view from tonight's location is breathtaking. The granite hills of Matobo provide a spectacular backdrop to this stunning home in the heart of Zimbabwe. Situated near the World Heritage Site of Matobo Hills, this is the weekend escape of Bex and Sophia Nglovu. It's a brief drive from Bulawayo for Bex and his family. He found it and is the CEO of an adventure safaris operation in Zimbabwe, Botswana and Zambia. When he wants to get away from it all, he comes here to the land of his ancestors. I definitely didn't expect to arrive in the middle of nowhere with a vintage car. Do you collect it? Yes, I, um, I do. I, uh, it's something that I have fallen week two over the last five years and uh, the Ford Model T is one of six. And you then decided to build this beautiful house in the middle of nowhere literally. Well that's the whole idea to be in the middle of nowhere. Um, the place really speaks of peace and tranquility. It's as close to nature as uh, one can get. The surroundings are really fitting of the architectural style. So I built it with the view to make sure that the place really resonated with the natural surroundings and that there is no disconnect between the natural elements and the house itself. At first glance, I'm already seeing some unique furniture pieces. It was a part of the creative process of putting the house together, was collecting and using old pieces that I've been collecting over years and finally they found a home. They called the house Kylie Chape, which is underbelly for house in stone. But one of the first features you notice is the Auto Parts Outdoor Lounge Suite. There's shock absorbers, there's flywheels, there's clutch plates and brake pads and various other things that all just came together um, for outdoor furniture that would outstand the weather elements. Well, I'd love to see more. Designing and building their home from scratch, Bex conceived the blueprint long before the build began. The wood and stone were far more than stylistic choices. I believe there's quite an interesting story behind the stone walls and the sleepers. Uh, there is. Uh, the railway sleepers, um, as you know, Africa was basically developed via the railway line system. So those are the original uh, reclaimed railway sleepers from the Rhodesian days. And I wanted to really incorporate them into part of the story of the house. 
And the stone walls are actually a feature uh, of Great Zimbabwe. So each individual bricket was hand carved. And uh, we put it together, we again wanted to show peace what this country is about. And that is the patterns of the ruins. And you go throughout Southern Africa where you find uh, old ruins from four or five hundred years ago that dry stone walling is the pattern. And on the stonework you will actually see the typical signature of the ruins of Africa through the chevron patterns that you would have seen on the wall. That's amazing. You have quite an eclectic style. Tell me about some of your favorite pieces. Well actually it's difficult to say favorite. It's like asking which one is your favorite child but you know there's the Benin lions um, which are a form of currency. The royalties out in the village of Benin and the villages they would have these uh, as a form or symbol of wealth and these various sizes uh, and that would symbolize what your wealth was. Out here on the veranda, color brings textures and prints together. Many features have been locally crafted in keeping with Beck's desire to make the most of homegrown skills from across the continent. And at the end of the deck, you'll notice there are little chairs for little people. Those are actually pygmy stools from Cameroon that the pygmies actually use. And uh, those are perfect for kids uh, when they're sitting around and playing games while the kids sit around and eat at that table. Well, shall we go in and see the rest of the house? Wait a minute, before we go though, I think you and I are both overdressed because we still have our shoes on. Way overdressed. <laughs> so I think it's only noble that we take them off, right? Correct. As they say, when in Rome. <laughs> Absolutely. The Nglovos see their feet as firmly rooted in African soil, but equally as citizens of the world. It shows in their mix of North, East, West and Southern African styles. Wow, this is absolutely amazing. You know what, I'm trying to box this home into a certain style, but I can't. There's so many interesting and unique pieces. Do you travel quite a lot to collect them? I do, and I live a life of travel. Uh, particularly interesting travels for me have been around Africa. But I have tried to incorporate quite a lot of unique pieces from my travels. Uh, but also just general pieces of very interesting artwork, such as this beautiful wooden cabinet behind me here from India, the door from uh, Zanzibar, and a lot of the doors in this house are actually either Indian doors or doors from East Africa. And they just paint a whole picture of creativity. And I love how you've incorporated the furniture. It's great to be able to uh, handpick all these individual pieces. I don't believe in having furniture for the sake of having the furniture. And as you can see, Lorna, this beautiful coffee table is actually Indian doors under the glass. And to, just to be able to see that uh, with the padlock in its original form, and even though the paint is basically half stripped off, uh, gives it quite a lot of charm and character. Bex, is that an actual tree? Uh, actually, that is a real tree. When I was building the house, um, it was important for me to have a very light footprint or rather impact on the area. And when I saw this tree, it was dead bang in the middle of what would be this house. So I actually decided to be a little adventurous and leave it to protect it and incorporate it as part of the house. So it actually, what you see here is only half of it. The rest of it is down below in the wine cellar. That is really cool. Speaking of low footprint, I'm sure this house is off the grid. We're completely off the grid. Uh, and that was an important aspect of developing a place like this in such a remote wilderness area. So the whole house runs off solar. We've got about 20 solar panels on the roof and that's just for electricity. And then of course we've got a solar array for the hot water. Come three o'clock on a Friday afternoon, it's destination Matobo with no Wi-Fi or cell signal. Just the family connecting with nature. It's lovely how from every angle of the house you're surrounded by these massive rocks. So the whole idea of these massive rocks is to be constantly reminded of them. Um, I created the space where you've got these great huge big windows. For example, if you look at those uh, Indian arches uh, from an old temple in India, everything is perfectly framed within the space of the big glass windows. So at any one time, everything is framed around this woodwork, whether it's the arches uh, from an Indian temple or the sliced railway sleepers that have formed this frame to basically frame the nature. Cooking in this kitchen must be quite delightful because it feels like you're outside. As you know, Lona, uh, in an African setting in the village, most cooking is actually done outside under the stars. So I really wanted to try and achieve that sense of being able to cook outside 
together with nature. There's surely one invitation that's prized above most in Zimbabwe, and that's being asked to join Sophia and Bex for the weekend. And Lona, this is our guest bedroom, uh, one of four. Each of the bedrooms has got a double wash basin and of course a bathtub. Doesn't matter where you are in this room, you'll notice that you've got constant views of just the great vistas of Matopo out there. I believe there's an interesting story with those taps. <laughs> there is a bit of an interesting story. So those taps um, and the wash basins are actually from an old derelict site in Marrakesh. One of my travels, I went up to the streets and uh, basically they're reclaimed, repolished. Uh, you'll see along the taps you've got all the magnificent Arabic etchings on them. Um, so I fell in love with that detail and you can see the same detail in the uh, bathtub taps. It's first and foremost a family home to the Nglovos and their three children. Beck's first step on meeting German-born nurse Sophia was to convince her that he needed permanent nursing. Her passion for volunteer work in Zim and his love for African conservation made them a fine match. And every day they wake up here, they consider a gift. Oh, Bex, this is absolutely spectacular. What inspired the entire look and feel of all the bedrooms? Well, it was about creating spacious places, um, but bringing in the view into the rooms. I've noticed quite a bit of corrugated iron around the house. I love the look of the reclaimed uh, roofing sheets. Um, I've spent a lot of time in Australia and a lot of buildings out in the outposts and shipyards and cattle posts are actually made out of corrugated iron sheets. But it actually started off as a, uh, as a funny joke between me and my friends that I was building a shack in the bush. So it was a, supposed to be a bush shack and I got slightly carried away as you see. I can't help but talk about this amazing view. This is a pretty epic view, but I'd like to take you for a special walk and just show you something else which will blow your mind. Matobo is the historical land of King Mzalikazi, his son Lobangula, and of Beck's forebears. When he first met Sophia, they spent their free days exploring the area. They fell in love with its beauty and sense of energy and were married here 13 years ago. They knew they would build a home in this land of the Aboriginal people of Southern Africa. It's not difficult to imagine that this entire rock face would have been covered in these Bushman paintings. Except you can see the two different sections, one on that side and one on this side that is weathered because of the weather elements. But if you ever look, that peak is what's protected this lot. Amazing. And kept it preserved for these thousands of years. This is just phenomenal. Beautiful, uh, very special stopover, but we'll carry on up the hill. It was a privilege being able to buy a 240 hectare tract of land in this magical area. And it's a pretty impressive rock to be on. Look at that, what a pleasant surprise. Well, this is what makes Matobo special, to be able to do wonderful things like this. What is it about living out here and having this beautiful home that you most enjoy? Well, you know, it's the peace, the tranquility, and this absolute wilderness area. Well, I can't wait to go to the edge to take it all in. And when we get to that edge, you'll feel like going to the next edge <laughs> because each of the edges are just spectacular. Oh, wow. Well, cheers to a beautiful part of Zimbabwe that people need to discover. Cheers. Great kingdoms come and go, but there's a sense of permanence and perspective. Bex considers himself lucky to be its guardian for a while and his children after him. I love this place, its ethos of design and the curation of everything under its roof. It's the kind of Africa that makes my heart smile. Still to come, we mark Winnie Matigizela Mandela's 80 rousing years in the lives of those she's impacted and inspired. No sounds anywhere near it. But Ma Winima Digizela Mandela is 80 years young. When we were invited to celebrate this icon of our struggles, who played a major role to our emancipation as South Africans, we knew it would be no regular tea and cake, and what a befitting celebration it turned out to be. The party was hosted by the ANC Women's League, of which Winnie Matigizela Mandela was once the president. She remains a guiding force. 
you have the incredible opportunity to play Mama Winnie in the series Madiba with Lawrence Fishburne. Being here tonight, what does that mean to you? Playing her was a huge responsibility that I took you know, upon myself to say, I, I would like to honor Mama this way. I hope she watches the show and she smiles uh, because I know what she's been through and I had to live that for a couple of months. And for her, it was a couple of years, many, many, many years. And I salute her and I adore her with every fiber of my being. Minister Lin, Mama celebrates 80 years. Now share with us your recollection of your journey with her. My recollection is a recollection of when I was 17 years old and came to her home. A young colored girl with everybody else and she just gave us a bed to sleep on the night. And so for me, she embodies what I think we should build in this country, a much more caring, warm, loving, sharing country. Vivian, you have a very special relationship with Umama. Just share with us some of your anecdotes and the times that you've shared with her. I, for one, owe my success in life and my success in the new South Africa largely due to the struggle that she pursued on all our behalf, the sacrifices she made while Madiba was in prison. She became the face of the struggle and we were growing up, we were youngsters. She inspired us from an early age and it's absolutely amazing to see someone that's been through such bitterness and now so much of scar being tortured, 491 days in solitary confinement and she still comes up with so much of peace and, and smiling and joy. Minister Maite, Mama Winnie, a very special being in our liberation, in our freedom, in our independence. Your reflections about her and indeed your message to her tonight. You have been a mother to your own biological children, but to me too as Maite, together with Tata, you took care of, loved, nurtured, groomed to become who I am today. No amount of words can express how we feel about the role you played in our lives, in our struggle, in bringing about source of hope. Minister Mbalula, many of us have got great and fond memories of Umama, who really took all of us in and nurtured us. Your thoughts and your message for her tonight. The decoration of being called mother of the nation is befitting to her because uh, indeed she became a mother to many of us and nurtured us politically and uh, for all our personal problems and otherwise we might have that's where we kneel so happy birthday mama enjoy and uh, a lot that has been achieved in this country has been to a great extent to the inspiration that you gave to the young people and all the people of South Africa will always remember that there was once lived a woman who was under such a lot of pressure but she stood firm until we got our freedom. We're saying to you, happy birthday. We wish you everything of the best. The message to Mama is Happy, happy, happy birthday to you, Mama Winnie, my love. Happy birthday, Mama Winnie. I love you so much. Whether they sang, said, or wrote it in a card, every guest had a personal message of thanks and congratulations for Ma Winnie. Being 80, how is Mama feeling? It feels ancient, of course, when I see my great-grandchildren sitting around me. All of you are great-grandchildren to me. It's been a, a long road uh, up to here, and I am blessed to be with you, all of you, at my age, and I'm one of the lucky few members of our organization who has lived up to this age. I am very thankful to my maker that I am still with you and have seen uh, history in its making. And like all other young democracies, we've got, we've got our problems, but uh, South Africa has been a miracle country. That we are where we are uh, today, within 23 years we have achieved what we have achieved. We'll get there one day. Sebula Mama Susulemula Mea Bailiwa Kaminemantiku and goes. With songs and books written about her, 
the ultimate tribute is how big a chapter she's been in so many lives. Happy birthday, Mama Winnie Matigizela Mandela. What a life, what a journey. And we know there's more to come. That is our show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining our party every Thursday night. And until it continues next week, good night and God bless. Next Thursday, Jonathan discovers the romance of the railways on a famed SA train journey. Tamrin Jardine, Tuli Pongolo and Candice Abrams hail fashion for the African figure. And the magnificent location home is the architectural work of none other than Tokyo Sefwale.